Andrew Schmertz is the CEO of Hopscotch Air is here. This proposal has been on the table with previous administrations. It's always been rejected. The issue here is that you raise the cost of flying and you're going to get less people flying. That's what happens. So the guy sitting in the back of the Gulfstream 5, he's not going to care about the $100. Right. But who's going to care? The pilots who are going to get less flights out of this. But a lot but of people will say, wait a second, wait a second. You're hiring a private plane. You must have money. You can afford another $100. The historical data clearly shows that you raise the cost of flying and you get less flying. It's $100 now, but I'll tell you something. This business is dominated by small businesses. We sure. live on the tipping point of success and failure every day. How much is it going to cost us to collect the $100? We're going to face extra burdens. It's a heavily regulated industry. Now we're going to have to do more paperwork, more accounting. Bring in Andrew Schmertz. He is with Hopscotch Air. Andrew runs a private aviation company in the Northeast. What regulations are getting in our way? Well, since Jamie Dimon works in the banking industry, it is very difficult for us to borrow money because of Dodd-Frank. We've been up and down the chain of banks. We've been really? trying to raise capital over a couple of years. It's not the nature of, of your business. I mean, well, so, aviation certainly company. aviation is part of, of it. Our business, the biggest problem for us growing is capital right now. Time now for our favorite person of the day when we pick one person who grabbed our attention and not for the right reasons. Today, it is the former head of the International Monetary Fund who allegedly used his financial talents and insatiable appetite for sex to run a prostitution ring. Nice. Remember Dominic Strauss-Kahn, the Frenchman who had faced sexual assault charges in New York, charges that were eventually dropped? Well, now he's on trial in Paris in a down-and-dirty, raucous proceeding where Strauss-Kahn and 12 other men are accused of aggravated pimping our favorite person of the day when we pick one person who grabbed our attention and eh, not for the right reasons. Today, it is a father who threw a birthday party for his 18-year-old teenage daughter that was so raucous, he's been arrested. Prosecutors say Jeff Lake, a lawyer who specializes in medical marijuana. Is that actually a legal specialty? I could see a lawyer smoking marijuana, but being practicing law about it. Well, he threw a Playboy Mansion-like party for his daughter, Olivia, in the city of Poway, California. Time now for our favorite person of the day when we pick one person who grabbed our attention, and eh, not for the right reasons. Today, it is a man being called the worst chief financial officer ever. How bad? He filed for personal bankruptcy. The publicly traded Super Dry, a British clothing store, has fired Sean Wills after it discovered that Wills had gone broke. Special correspondent Andrew Schmertz has the story from South Dakota, part of our ongoing reporting initiative, Chasing the Dream. Living paycheck to paycheck isn't easy. Sometimes you have to come up with creative ways to relieve the stress. Good way to just live in denial is just throw away your bills, you know. It's really tough thing anyway, so. Christy McLaughlin and her husband TJ were getting by on TJ's salary as a manufacturing plant manager here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That was until TJ got sick. I was working the night shift and I was on my feet a lot and I had a couple wounds start developing on my leg and uh, they were pretty small at first and then they got infected and just started growing. When TJ went to get treatment, the doctor said it would only take a day, but in fact he ended up missing a whole week of work. They ended up docking my pay. We were, ended up being short on bills. I panicked. So. So McLaughlin came here, a title loan place just a few miles from his home. He says the process was simple and quick. They inspected his car and then handed him $1,200 in cash. He agreed to pay $322 a month for a year. I was making good money. I didn't really foresee a problem paying it back at that time. Title loans and payday loans are supposed to be short-term quick fixes for people who can't get traditional credit. Do you need fast cash? You've come to the right place. They use high-energy commercials and bank-like storefronts to entice people to borrow money at triple-digit interest rates. The problem? They are rarely short-term. Borrowers frequently need to take out a second loan to pay off the first one. It's called flipping. The average payday loan in the United States is flipped eight times. They're a debt trap that's intentionally marketed to the financially unsophisticated, intending to lock them in on something that they can't pay back. Former state lawmaker Steve Hickey tried to rein in the industry, which charges an average of 574% interest, with legislation to cap interest rates. 
but he could never get his bills out of committee. South Dakota has been the epicenter of high interest rates since the 1980s, when the state repealed laws capping rates to attract jobs from credit card companies like Wells Fargo and Citibank. The purpose at that time was to bring in 400 Citibank jobs, not to bring in 400 percent interest rates. Hickey wasn't alone in recognizing the problems created by these short-term loans. Steve Hildebrand runs Josiah's Coffee Shop here in Sioux Falls. He's seen the detrimental effects of these high interest rates firsthand. I've had employee after employee after employee over the last three years in the coffee shop going through horrible, horrible financial experiences, taking out these emergency loans and just getting into this terrible cycle of debt uh, that is incredibly hard uh, for them to, to get out of. Hildebrand, an openly gay Democrat who worked on the Obama campaign, didn't have much in common with Hickey, a Republican and conservative Christian pastor who has railed against homosexuality. But they did see eye to eye on what they consider predatory lending. We created a campaign called South Dakotans for Responsible Lending. Steve and I are chair and co-chair. and It's brought people on the right and the left together in a very healthy way. They decided to use a tactic that was born right here in the Mount Rushmore state in 1898, the ballot initiative. And you're registered oh. to vote in South Dakota? Yeah. Reynold Nesaba is a volunteer gathering signatures to put a measure on the ballot that would do what lawmakers could not, cap interest rates on all loans at 36 percent. The goal? To get well more than the 13,871 signatures required to put the issue in front of voters next November. With millions of dollars in revenue at stake, the lending industry is strongly opposed to any new regulation. Two-thirds of U.S. states allow some form of high interest rate loans. When asked about capping rates at 36 percent, the one payday lender who did speak with us was unequivocal. It's a kill bill. Uh, for the state. It, the entire lending industry would be out of business with that. Chuck Brennan, a Sioux Falls native, is the founder and CEO of Dollar Loan Centers, a chain of more than 90 short-term lending stores with 11 locations in South Dakota. We have a huge customer base. In South Dakota, we've had over 40,000 applicants for loans over the years. Over 20 percent of the state who's over 18 has applied for a loan here, which really shows there's a need for the product out there. Further, Brennan says a rate cap will actually harm the people it's intended to help. It isn't like when the industry goes out of business, people are going to stop needing money. They're going to have to turn to online loans, illegal sources. After months of hard work, the campaign gathered over 20,000 signatures for Hildebrand to deliver to the Secretary of State. Payday lenders are going to spend millions of dollars on television trying to confuse voters and, you know, misrepresent our side. So the fight's not over. Hildebrand has one year to convince South Dakotans to vote for his interest rate cap. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Andrew Schmartz in Sioux Falls, South Dakota.